Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast, which is my podcast about knitting, crochet, and my journey as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. Hi, I'm Carmen, I'm your host. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl and on all of the other things right here. And I'm going to start off um, by telling you about what I'm wearing before I get in a tangent and forget. <laughs> because uh, I don't wear this top very often, so I'm not sure if it has ever appeared on the podcast. It's a crochet top, and I made this quite a few years ago, but I'm happy that it still fits me. Um, it's just a nice summer top, and I made it with some just plain 100% cotton. Um, the pattern is from this book by the designer Michio. And um, not sure where I originally found this um, because <laughs> it's been quite a few years. Um, so this was in my college days. Um, I was studying Chinese and my one of my professors actually told me about Ravelry uh, because uh, she had seen me uh, crocheting um, in class class breaks um, and she was a knitter and she asked me, oh, do you, do you know of Ravelry? So, um, and I know that I just browsed uh, a lot of Japanese patterns at the start and um, so a lot of those patterns I think were by Gosyo, so G-O-S-Y-O -O, and I love their patterns and I think that's what led me to this one. So uh, Michio, you can find her on Ravelry as well, that's where I found her book I think, but I'm sure you can google her and um, if you're not on Ravelry. And then somehow <laughs> I found the the link to actually buy this book. It's uh, completely in Japanese. Um, this is actually the top I made. Um, yeah, the photography isn't that great, so it's not very um, clear. Um, but it is. It's just. It's very Japanese. <laughs> I just. I just love like she's just posing with some jam um, and honey and I just love how the model is like seems completely bored um, but yeah it just I don't know to me I don't I don't really know how I can pinpoint it but to me it really has a Japanese aesthetic um, just maybe the quirkiness I don't know. <laughs> and yeah, I, uh, I've had this book for quite a few years now and um, I've made two tops and there's quite a lot of fun stitch patterns in here. It's not just crochet, it's also knitting. And uh, this cardigan is actually worn in two ways. Yeah, I've also made this poncho, and this is actually what made me buy the book, because this poncho is really, really cute. I did make it a little bit longer, and I made it so that the sleeves end here, so to make it kind of more a top. But, um, yeah, it's really, really cute. So, um, I just wanted to show you this. Um, you know, again, it's completely in Japanese. Um, but there are charts in here, but um, in order to read the charts, I did need to uh, ask some of my friends for help. So, um, because, you know, I was studying Chinese and then um, I had some friends in the uh, Japanese department and they helped me with um, some of the characters in here so I know, uh, you know, what's a chain stitch, where do I begin, what's the right side versus the wrong side, um, you know. Because um, some words use Chinese characters and I'm able to kind of understand them, but some words were just completely in um, Hakana? Katana? No, Katana is a sword. <laughs> Hiragana. 
Yes, but I wanted to show you because, um, yeah, I was a big, big fan of Japanese crochet patterns. And yeah, that's where this top came from. So I have been making quite, quite a bit uh, of progress on various projects. So I have a bunch of projects to show today. And one of them I had actually finished before the last episode, but um, I hadn't shown it yet. So here are my finished no pearl cuff down socks. They are a little bit short in the foot. So um, I think I just really wanted to cast off and then make the foot a little bit too short. Or perhaps it was the garter stitch heel that I perhaps stretched it too much when um, measuring. Anyway, um, they they are fitting me fine for now, but um, sometimes the heel slips under the foot and that's when you know that uh, the foot is probably too short. So I might do some surgery on these, but um, I'm just hoping that with a couple wears and washes they might stretch just that, <laughs> just that bit that I need. But um, I love how they came out. Um, and yes, I made another perfectly matching pair of socks, which is very unlike me. Uh, so the other pair being my City Stripe socks that I made for my boyfriend. Um, but yeah, I, I just really, really like it. And there, yeah, there is some, something visually pleasing about having completely identical socks. Um, Yes, and I was happy to use this uh, mini skein set, so I had a set of really tiny uh, sock balls, and they were from Sandra's Craftfulness. Uh, Sandra is not dyeing yarn anymore, um, who knows if she'll ever return to the yarn dyeing scene, but this was one of my last purchases of her yarn. And I'm also knitting the No Pearl Toe Up socks with some of her yarn. Um, and I think this colorway was called Last Dance because it was her last colorway um, that she designed for her shop. So I uh, wound it by hand in a uh, gobstopper ball, um, which is the way that um, when indie dyers dye self-striping yarn, they usually um, or not usually. Some of them uh, ball up their yarns like this, and I really just like it for uh, non-self-striping yarns as well. So yeah, because this was uh, a very special skein brought by Sandra's Scruffleness, I thought to ball it up in a special way. And uh, I haven't made much progress on this pair. <laughs> It's just a toe, um, but you can already see the color of this yarn. So it's it's kind of uh, striping right now. Um, I'm not sure if it will continue to do that because I'm increasing, so that might uh, change the um, striping pattern a little bit. Uh, but it's mostly uh, minty green or minty blue um, with some dark blue in there, some gold, some brown, uh, some pink even. And yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful. I especially love the uh, kind of mustard colored flecks in there. Um, so if you haven't heard about these socks before, so um, I am going to do a no pearl set. <laughs> um, so these are the no pearl cuff down socks and yes, you do not need to do one single pearl stitch in this entire pair. Um, and I got the idea when my boyfriend was knitting me some socks, um, he is still knitting on that very same sock. Um, and he told me he wasn't looking forward to the ribbing because then he would have to uh, switch between knit and purl the whole time. 
And I thought, okay, well, what's a way that we can, you know, get rid of the pearls or uh, do a cuff in a different way? Um, and sure, you can do stockinette cuffs and just let them roll over a little bit, just like the uh, Rose City Rollers. Uh, but I don't really um, like that effect as much. And, you know, they might not stay up as well on you know, mid-calf socks. They might be perfect for ankle socks, but I'm not sure whether they will stay up. Um, and then, you know, if you wear them with uh, jeans, you'll also just feel the bump uh, of that roll. Momo has found my blocking mats. Hey! Momo chick! <laughs> Momo! Nope, she doesn't want to say hi. <laughs> Momo. Yeah. So I thought, what is another way to do ribbing? And then I thought of um, how you do ribbing on a crochet project. And then you basically just, you know, you make it sideways. So you uh, either do single crochet or double crochet and just go in rows and then make the cuff that way. Um, with crochet, you can kind of mimic the effect of knit ribbing. Um, and I thought that's, you know, that's a great idea. Perhaps uh, I could do that with garter stitch as well. So I did. So these uh, are made cuff down. So you knit the garter stitch cuff first. You pick up stitches along the side and then you knit down and the heel is also garter stitch and it's a little bit felted now because I've worn them um, and yeah the garter stitch heel fits really nicely um, it's very stretchy uh, you don't feel the ridges that much uh, when you walk on them so um, I, I mean I will say if, if you have a particularly sensitive heel, then the garter stitch heel might not feel as nice, but, um, you know, <laughs> I'm not sure if I have any feeling in my heels, so, <laughs> yeah, for me, they are just fine, and, um, yeah, and for the toe, uh, it's just a regular toe, um, you don't use any pearl stitches for that, so, um, yes, I will be working on the pattern soon. Um, and I have recorded videos as well, so yes, stay tuned for that. And then um, the toe up socks, so I will also be using the garter stitch heel, and then they will be pretty much the same, just the other way around. And then here I have to somehow um, use the live stitches that I have on my sock and then knit the garter stitch cuff from that. So that will be interesting, um, and I couldn't, I can't quite visualize it yet, which is why I did the cuff down socks first. But um, yeah, I still have a way to go, so I have a bit of time to figure that out. So yes, and return of the whip board. Ta -ta -da. I have to mark my progress on here for the cuff down socks, which are now finished. So I'm going to complete this bar and then I can take it off the board. Ta-da! Okay, and then talking about socks, sock yarn, I think I'm going to show you this project first, which um, is with the new Scapies Downtown. Um, which was the star of last, um, of the last episode. So Scapies Downtown, it's their new self-striping yarn. And, uh, after completing my City Stripes, uh, sock pattern, I've been having another go with some ideas. And, um, uh, I have two ideas right here, and one of them, mm, I have to put on hold for now. 
but one of them I'm quite excited about and no none of them are socks so because I've just been thinking very hard about how to use self-striping yarn but not for socks because you see it all the time in socks and um, you know uh, the Netherlands is very much a crochet country, um, so when my uh, so when this yarn came out and then my sock pattern, I saw a lot of people asking, "Oh, is there going to be a crochet pattern as well?" Um, and that uh, really got me thinking, like, how could you use this for crochet? Because uh, with self-striping yarn, and these stripes are four meters long, so each, you know. Each um, bit of dyed yarn is four meters. Um, and for a sock, you know, you can get six or seven rounds um, of one color. Uh, you know, six or seven rounds for a stripe. And, uh, but with crochet, um, each stitch uses up more. So um, I was thinking how how can you make this work for crochet? And uh, so this is my swatch. Um, and it hasn't completely worked out. So I've just done uh, crochet trebles. So that's UK trebles, US double crochet. And I have done uh, 59 trebles. And for some colors, that was exactly one stripe and then for other colors it didn't quite work out so here for the green one it was a bit longer so um, yeah um, so I think I you know if I really want to make this into a thing I have to um, tweak it a little bit more you know it's um, what I did was I just started swatching uh, just uh, crochet trebles and um, and then I started counting from you know say um, I used this purple stitch so can you see where the blue ends and transitions into the pink it has this one purple stitch and um, that was quite at the beginning of my swatch and then I crochet until the next purple stitch and uh, I counted all of the stitches and divided it between the colors so and what I mean to um, calculate with that is how many stitches I could do per color um, and the result was 58.8 uh, stitches per color uh, so I did 59 um, and and still it didn't quite work so um, um, but then I'm thinking okay did I start in the same place you know if you start um, here if you start the pink row with that purple stitch you know maybe that purple is actually still a part of the blue section and not of the the pink section you know so it was a little bit difficult uh, so <laughs> I just got frustrated after a while and I stopped um, but I, I do think that it could be really cute so I thought perhaps I could you know make it into a plant pot cozy um, that might be quite cute so yeah but that was my crochet swatch and then I also um, did a bit of knitting with downtown and it has just come off the blocking boards so it's nice and flat Ta-da! <laughs> and now as soon as I pick it up it starts rolling rolling again so I'm just knitting in plain stockinette and I'm not going to tell you what it is just yet but yeah, I've just been knitting on this. I think this has been three days of knitting. Um, this is just really nice TV knitting and car knitting uh, because it's just stockinette. Um, it's 30, 35 stitches wide. And I 
I've done a little ribbing at this end and and then just stuck it out so yes what's it gonna be is it a scarf you know is it a doctor who scarf to be who knows so let me know what you think it is um I think it's about halfway done um yeah I need to see about that but um see how large the stripes are now on, on the socks they were like this uh, but this is also with a larger needle so this is with three millimeter and for the socks I use 2.25 millimeter oh and this color um it's uh, street lights, I think. Yeah, I think the yellow one was street lights, and this one was gallery, gallery central. Um, yes, so prepare to see this in the next episode as well, and I hope to have some more to show you. All right, I have one more project to show you, and it's a crochet project, and. Um, I think I talked about this two episodes ago. It's my Olga cardigan, which has been a long time in the making, several years, in fact, and I am almost done. So last time, uh, I don't actually know <laughs> what I was working on last time. I think maybe the button band. Yeah, I'm not sure, but, um, um, I have completed the button band. See, the buttonholes are... <laughs> you can't really see them here. And I've picked out some really cute buttons to go with this. So, um, uh, they will all be mix mismatched. Um, various dark colors such as uh, plum and dark green and, um, yeah just various shades of purple and green um and so oh right um i have put this aside because uh the last row of the button band is supposed to be crab stitch and crab stitch is basically single crochet but then worked in the other direction so reverse single crochet and um, I had never done that stitch before and uh, I don't know if I was doing it right uh, but my fabric was very just curling up uh, so I think I might have done it too loosely um, and when when I bind off uses more yarn. No, it, al it almost always uses more yarn. And I think because I was working looser, so I was using up more meterage of yarn per stitch, that it, that, that was why it was curling. So it was kind of ruffling. Um, and I think that was why. So I just did another round uh, or another row of uh, single crochet because it looks nice, I know how to do it, and um, yeah, <laughs> I was satisfied with it. Uh, and then I proceeded to the border or the edge on the bottom, so the lower edging, um, and I've done, uh, it's just three rows, I think. I've done three rows now and uh, there is a one more row and in that row I will also be having to do some motifs and they will be kind of like this. So um, let me show you the cardigan again. So this is the Olga cardigan and if you can see at the bottom it has some nice motives as well so I am now going to do that and yeah it's made in the last round in the last row of the uh, bottom edging so yeah it'll be a very long a uh, very long round row <laughs> but um you know, at least if it's done in one piece and you don't have um, a bunch of ends. And I've already woven in 
a lot of ends today because all of these motives all had two ends and I have just, um, yeah, I have a bit more to go because there are <laughs> a lot of motives here. Let me see if I can actually uh, put it on for you because there is no yarn attached, <laughs> no strings attached now. So um, I can just put it on. I think it's a little bit big on me perhaps, but that was because uh, I'm using a larger, um, um, a thicker yarn. Yeah. Um, the yarn that was uh, originally, or that this cardigan is designed for, is a very thin cotton yarn. Um, yeah, and the thought of all those tiny stitches just had me a little bit like, ah. so um, I went for a thicker cotton yarn, which is Scapius Whirlette. So it's the same weight as a Scapius Whirl, uh, if you've ever used that. And this is the mango colorway, which is a lovely uh, mustard brown. And so this is it so far. I still have to block it. So that might make it even bigger. But, um, you know, it can also be nice and flowy. So, yeah. It's looking quite good. Oh, the back. Yes. And, yeah, just uh, really pleased with how it's looking so far. Um, I did just uh, slight modifications. So the last round uh, on the button edging, uh, I did just a single crochet. And on the corners here and here and then here, I did some uh, decreases for um, valley corners and some increases for hill corners. Just, you know, not every, not every row, but um, just to make it a little bit more flat. And I think that worked out very nicely. So yes, now I just have the bottom edging to go. And I'm really excited to have this finished. Well, and I need to sew on the buttons, but that's, you know, um, that's not a lot of um, work, especially now I have the buttons picked out because that was a lot of work. So I hope to be finishing that bottom edging soon and then I can block it and see how it fits because yeah, it's a little bit big right now, but um, we will see. I am hoping that it will just be kind of big and nice and flowy. Um, and the reason that it is big is, again, because I'm using a bigger yarn. So um, I knit the smallest size, which is size small, uh, and I'm around a size medium large, um, and it's becoming a little bit too big on me. So perhaps it is a large or... Yeah, I think it is a large, but um, just so you know, if you want to do this as well, so it is the Olga Cardigan by Susan Walsh, and it is available in the Escapius Yarn Bookazine. This is number six, the folk issue, and this was uh, 2018? Yes, 2018. All right, so let's mark my progress on here. So there's not much uh, progress since last time, but there's also not much more to go. So I'm just going to slice that in half. Yay! Okay, so that was all that I wanted to show you in terms of crochet and knitting. I also uh, want to give you an update on my little mango plant. <laughs> Um, so I showed you this one two weeks ago and I don't even know if, if it was, if it had leaves by then. I think it was just sprouting from the seed. And look at these leaves! So this is two weeks of growth. <laughs> so yes, this is my mango seed or mango pip. Um, 
and the leaves are looking very shiny and thin and leathery and also where the leaves are touching each other they are not growing on that side so see this leaf see it is not growing on the other side and same with this leaf see it's also as if it's been cut <laughs> so I'm not sure if you know the leaves do that or yeah but um, I think it is really fun uh, and the roots are already showing on the bottom here and yeah I do really have to repot this because this is becoming way too small and I don't want to risk that I'm not able to get it out anymore so um, yeah I will be repotting it later today and I've already started my next mango seed uh, and I'll be giving that to my mother um, yeah, and I'm just really excited about this because uh, I used to grow a lot, well, I say a lot, but uh, I used to put a lot of time and effort in growing avocado plants, and I have been successful, but then those plants died of, um, you know, uh, I kept them in the office, which was heavily air-conditioned, and then I brought them home and they died of, you know, <laughs> temperature. Um, because it wasn't summer and it was really really hot here um and now i have one ma uh, one avocado plant survivor but i don't think he's gonna make it because uh he sprouted a lot of new leaves but then they're all dying again so yeah but this uh, and avocado plants take a long while to to grow to even sprout so i think it was two months before the seed actually sprouts uh, roots or yeah and with this one it has been i think a month uh of me putting the seed into water and then until now so it's a lot more satisfying than avocado so yeah, um, so I wanted to show you that. I'm thinking of a name. <laughs> On Instagram I got a lot of uh, names starting with M for suggestions, such as Margot, uh, Maggie, Madeline? No, not Madeline. But um, yeah, I'm still thinking. I also got Pip and Pulp as name suggestions, which is really funny because mango pulp um yeah so i don't know uh, my boyfriend suggested ananas which is pineapple but obviously i already have a pineapple plant <laughs> so he can't name her ananas um right and lastly oh, i just see a whip that I've completely forgotten about. Let me just grab that. Okay, so I was just about to tell you about the new Netflix show that I've been watching, but first, there's more. Um, there's more knitting, yes. So, I've cast on a sweater. The same day that I cast on the No Pearl Toe Up socks, I cast on this sweater. And in my mind, I'm calling it the Strawberry Latte Sweater because I'm using lots of pinks and then um, white. So a lovely palette. And um, this is my own design so far. So I have cast on for the neck. And it is a one by one neckline and I'm I made it twice as long so that I can tuck it in and then uh, sew it so that it is doubled and I think that would be really nice and I'm at the part where you can't really spread it out anymore um, <laughs> so it's a bit difficult to show you but uh, I'm doing stripes with the various balls of uh, mauve and pink and purple. Um, and this actually was a mini that I got from, was it Georgia Fibers? 
oh, I don't know, <laughs> I don't remember her name. Uh, she's a hand dyer um, from either Spain or Italy. Oh, I think it's Georgia, but I can't remember, but um, I ordered a yarn club from her and this was a mini that I got and I thought it was just really, really cute. And um, so I used most of that for this stripe. And then this one is Hedgehog Fibers in the damsel color that I got from Jefrau Lanzofans, which I got uh, earlier this year. And the white that I'm using is by Atelier Sopa. Uh, she's a Dutch India dyer, Yuse. And this was a beautiful uh, white and speckled um, colorway. So it has speckles of pink and um, dark, um, dark purple and black and orange. And this colorway is called White Orchid or Wild Orchid, one of those. Yeah, and it's just going to be a yoked sweater, uh, striped, and using up oddments in my stash. Uh, yeah, and I'm excited to see where it goes. So, ta-da! One more knitting project. So let's actually put that on the board. The strawberry latte sweater. I am not very far yet. Um, perhaps two-thirds of the way done with the yoke. I'm going to say that is about here. Yeah, this doesn't have to be very exact, just a progress board. And yes, the wild strawberry socks are still on here. I, I, um, I have no excuse. <laughs> I need to dig those out again. So after that final knitting project, I have one more thing to show you or two to tell you. Uh, and that is that I am completely hooked on a new uh, Netflix show and it is called New Amsterdam. And it is, you know, if you liked Grey's Anatomy, then you will like this too, because it is a hospital show and, you know, um, uh, each of the doctors have their own have their own uh, storylines, but also you know um, uh, interesting patient cases, and then they're trying to figure out you know what kind of illness the patient has, and yeah, it's um, it's interesting. So um, I am in season two already. So yeah, if you like doctor shows, then um, this one is for you. But do be warned because like Grey's Anatomy, you get invested in the characters and then dramatic stuff happens and yeah, <laughs> it's not always a feel-good show. But uh, yeah, I, I just, I used to love Grey's Anatomy. Uh, I haven't watched it in a long time. Um, and that one is not on Netflix, so I think if Grey's Anatomy was on Netflix that I would be watching that. But. Yes, so here's my Netflix recommendation of the week. And also, um, uh, there is this new uh, movie on Netflix. It's a, it's an animated movie. Uh, the Mitchells Against the Machines. I think it's called that. The Mitchells or some other family. Uh, but it's a family working together against uh, robots that have taken over the world. And the, uh, the members of the family are all... Um, uh, what's the umbrella term? Neurodivergent? So um, uh, the kids are autistic and um, and you know the moral of the story is that they use their differences to um, you know that is actually what helps them uh, in this story. So it's a really a really nice story. Um, I still have to watch it myself but uh, I heard it um, recommended on Instagram and I thought oh I want to mention that on the podcast as well. So yes that is all from me this week and uh, just so you know every Every other week, I'll, I'm posting another podcast episode, so I will be back in two weeks. And in the weeks that I'm not posting a podcast episode, I am recording a new episode of Designer Talk to go on my Patreon page. So I'm publishing a new video each week and then, you know, 
one week on YouTube and the other week on Patreon. And it's also, um, <laughs> I don't know where this sentence was going. Darning season? No. <laughs> the Darn It Masterclass is now live. The first two chapters are up on my Patreon page and next Tuesday I'll be posting the third chapter. Um, is it the third? No, the fourth. I cannot. Ugh. <laughs> so there are so there are three chapters up already. Yes, the duplicate stitch, then the knitted patch, and then the weaving method. Yes, and then next week is the fourth chapter, and that will be the crochet patch. So um, the crochet patch, uh, I showed you that last time, is the flower patch that I did here, and I'm just really proud of this one. Um, so yes, this week I did the weaving technique, and then next week is the crochet patch and I'm working on um, more chapters to add as well so I'm posting a new chapter each Tuesday all right so that's all for me today uh, I hope you have a lovely week and a lovely weekend ahead of you and I'll see you again in two weeks bye bye